It's time for Recipe of the Day. I've been talking about pork seasoning blends, pork chops, and grilling so much in the past couple of months, and I just realized that I've never shared my grilled pork chop recipe with you. So this is a really, really basic method for how to make juicy, delicious pork chops. First of all, I'm going to say that we are starting with a chop that's a good inch to an inch and a half thick. You want that for it to be nice and juicy. Any of those thinner chops are going to dry out on the grill. And I do like one with a bone. I tend to like that kind of bone on pork chop anyways. I just like how like juicy it gets right near the bone. You know what I mean? So that helps retain some of the moisture. A lot of the meat in the pork chop is actually loin meat and is quite dry or lean. And so So having that bone there just adds that little bit of extra moisture. Also, what will add some moisture is to brine the pork chops. I have done the testing on this, as you know, and I know the optimum amount of time. It doesn't actually take that long. One hour in the brine is going to do it. I will link to my pork chop brine information for you, but it's basically four cups of cold water, four and a half tablespoons of Morton's kosher salt. You mix that up until the salt has dissolved. Then I like to add in a scoop, like a good tablespoon of garlic powder, and then the pork chops go in there for one hour. Even 45 minutes will make a difference. And I usually put them in the fridge, but that's technically within the safe zone of time to be at room temperature. So you can leave them at room temperature for that time as well, as long as you're going to be cooking them right away. Next, you're going to season the pork chops. Now, if you have brined them, you just discard the brine and pat the chops dry, and then probably omit the salt entirely from the recipe. Sometimes I do put a little bit and the recipe here does say too, but I don't think it needs it. And then what other seasonings are you going to use? Well, make sure if you're using any kind of seasoning blend that it doesn't contain salt if you brine. If you didn't brine, then you're going to add the salt or use a seasoning blend with salt. That is totally fine. So the recipe as it is, is just very basic. There's just pepper in there and the salt, of course. I do have a really, really good pork rub recipe though for like a seasoning blend. I will link to that for you. And the pork chop seasoning blend over on the cookful. That one is, of course, delicious here as well. So you can do whatever seasonings you like. That is not what matters. What really matters is how you grill them and for how long. That's going to make the difference. Oh, and when I say how long, I mean to what temperature. That is the important thing. So you're going to get your grill ready for grilling over a medium-high heat. If you have a thermometer on your grill, that's between 375 to 425. And if you don't have a thermometer on your grill, you want to put your hands about 5 inches inches above the cooking grate where the meat is going to go. And then you leave your hand there and you want to count for about four to five good seconds. So one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. And when you get to four or five seconds, that is going to be your medium high heat. Now, my grill doesn't tend to stick for pork chops, so I don't add any oil to the grill or to the chops. But if you want to be safe, you can put a little bit of oil right on the pork chops and then they're going right over that medium high direct heat. And you are cooking them for about five minutes per side with the lid down. Down. But really what you want to know is what temperature they are inside. This is the important thing. Now, I know I've told you this before, but I'm going to keep telling you about it. Back when I was growing up, the safe temperature for pork was considered to be 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And so we all grew up, if you're my age or older, we grew up eating pork that was well cooked to that temperature. And so a lot of times if we're talking about loin meat, it was very white and very dry. But since those olden days, the National Pork board and everybody has changed those guidelines. It is now safe to cook pork that has reached 145 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's kind of like a medium rare, medium sort of temperature. So it's a little bit pinker. And that means that it's going to be juicier, just like our steaks that are juicier at that temperature. Now, if you still like your pork well done, go ahead and keep it all the way up to 155, 160 before taking it off. But I urge you to just try going a little bit lower. If you're somebody who likes it more well done, try doing 150, 155 before you pull it off. Try maybe 145 and letting it rise up to 150. It will be juicier. If you don't end up liking it, no judgment here. You know, my family is full of people who like well done steaks and I kind of like them medium well as well. So, you know, no judgment, but it's worth trying if you want to have an extra juicy pork chop. So either use a probe thermometer that can be in one of 
those pork chops the whole time it's cooking and monitor to get it up to the temperature you want or use an instant read thermometer. It's going to be about four to six minutes per side. Uh, you can use the touch test as well. You want it to feel, well, for the 145, 150 temperature, one and a quarter inch steak should be like barely firm to the touch. Now, those can just be cooked as they are, seasoned how you did them, or you can brush them in the last like minute per side with some barbecue sauce. Just a store-bought barbecue sauce is fine, whatever you like, but I will also link to my favorite homemade sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. It is so good. So if you want to make your own, you can do that. And then, yeah, you brush it on when they're nearly done and like flip them once or twice just so it can start to like char a little bit in there. That is how you make juicy, delicious grilled pork chops. I will put the link to the recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD. Everything there is arranged by date, so it's helpful to know that today is August 22nd of 2024. And I want to let you know that I'm all over social media. If you want more recipes, ideas, tips, find me. I am Cook the Story everywhere that I'm at. And that is Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Look for me there. Cook the Story. I'm Christine Pittman from CookTheStory.com, TheCookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. (laughs) 